Come on. Yes! Yes! Seven kills! <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. This time with a very, very special aircraft. An aircraft I hold very dear to my heart. The Nakajima Ki-44 Shoki. The Demon Queller. This is my absolute favorite of all the Japanese fighters that entered service during World War II. I think it's an absolutely beautiful bird. A very special aircraft. And an aircraft that generally gets a little bit overlooked compared to um, the other aircraft that flew with the Japanese uh, army service. Now, I have noticed that there isn't really a guide to this aircraft, whether it be historically or um, gameplay-wise, at least not an extensive one here on YouTube, so I decided to change this up. This time, um, diving in into a lot of lit literature um, over the KI-44, and decided to bring you uh, the ultimate guide to this aircraft, both in historic terms and gameplay-wise. And in order to do so, and starting with the history, we need to dive back into the 1930s. So let me take you back to a trip to Japan to around 90 years ago. Now, with the, um, the Japanese army already gained some experience, um, in the China theater in 1937. The army had flown the Ki-27 Nate in, uh, against many Russian aircraft. The Nate, the Ki-27, of course we have it in game as well. This little beauty here. It was a very, very maneuverable aircraft. Uh, and against the uh, Soviet I-15, I-153 biplanes, this aircraft was quite a handful. It, it was able to down a lot of enemy planes thanks to its exceptional agility and uh, its speed advantage. It was also very easy to fly, um, very easy to land. But when the Soviets started deploying I-16s, they suddenly faced a fighter that was quite a match for the Ki-27. Therefore, uh, a new fighter was developed, the which was, would result in the Ki-43, the famous Oscar. The Oscar retained a lot of the Ki-27's exceptional maneuverability um, and uh, its easiness to fly, but was a lot faster and more modern. It was also more heavily armed, sporting two 50 caliber uh, Ho-103 machine guns compared to the two, uh, to the two 7.7 millimeters of the Nate. Um, the army soon realized that performance of of not only fighters but also bombers were uh, improving quite a bit. In general, the 1930s were an era of uh, a lot of uh, technological advancement in aeronautics and they soon realized that uh, several large air bases would suddenly be well within range for Soviet bombers. They therefore uh, fought the need for an air defense fighter, an aircraft that would be able to climb quickly, be heavily armed and able to shoot down bombers in large numbers. They were already uh, developing the Oscar, the Ki-43. We see it here, one of the most famous aircraft of World War II from originating from Japan. And Nakajima had back itself the contract for this new fighter. And, uh, as luck would have it, they would also get the contract for the new air defense fighter. This would place quite a burden on Nakajima. So the, the design teams were practically run in parallel, one designing the Ki-43 Oscar and the other the Ki-44 Shoki. At this time, the name of the aircraft was of course, was of course not yet uh, designated. But the chief designer for the Ki-43 was famous aircraft engineer Hideo Itokawa. While he would focus on the Ki-43, another uh, designer, uh, Tei Koyama, would take care of the new air defense fighter. While Itokawa technically had uh, the supervision above uh, Koyama, he decided to 
basically let Koyama go wild, incorporating all his radical ideas into this new air defense fighter. Koyama and his design team designed a pretty interesting aircraft. An aircraft that would become the Ki-44, the Shoki. Now, Koyama faced a little bit of trouble. He, needed, he knew that this new interceptor, this new air defense fighter, needed to climb quickly. He um, basically saw that instead of maneuverability, this aircraft needed to focus on speed, heavy armor, or heavy firepower, should we say, and most importantly, a very high climb rate. In order to do so, he had to uh, uh, use a different engine than in the Ki-43. The Ki-43 practically used the same Nakajima Zake that would also power the famous Navy A6M0 fighter, the air defense fighter. Koyama Ford needed something better, something bigger. Uh, Koyama's choice fell on the H-41, itself a development of the Nakajima H-5, uh, which was itself, I think, a development of the uh, earlier Kotobuki engine. The H-41 was a bomber engine. It would also be uh, deployed in the Army's Nakajima Ki-49 Helen heavy bomber. The new engine was somewhat larger than the uh, one in the Ki-43, um, being some 12.6 centimeters bigger in diameter. However, it did develop uh, quite a bit more horsepower, with the uh, Zake developing barely a thousand horsepower and the H41 around 1200. This would be fitted into a quite small fuselage, resulting in one of the smallest uh, fighters the Japanese fielded, fielded during World War II, if not for one of the smallest fighter for any uh, participating nation in World War II. Koyama basically had two. Um, choices. He could design an aircraft with a very small fuselage, small wings, but with bad visibility since the big engine would take a lot of space. Or he could, he could design a larger aircraft, giving it better visibility by raising the pilot's position, but which would result in an aircraft of limited performance. Koyama decided to uh, for the first solution designing an aircraft that was incredibly short, small, uh, with a stubby fuselage and short and narrow wings. He basically knew that the aircraft would have some handling restrictions and indeed the later Ki-44 would be known for a high landing speed, being a bit of a handful for inexperienced pilots, but with some impressive performance. As we can see, the large H-41 engine pretty much um, from the front is the main area of air resistance with the rest of the fuselage being incredibly narrow and tiny tapering down to uh, tapering um, down towards the end of the fuselage the almost slab sided uh, sides of the fuselage would um, practically act like an extension of the tail surfaces, giving the aircraft better stability in high speed uh, in high speed, um, high speed, speed dives and turns, allowing for accurate shooting on the intended bombers. The aircraft was equipped with a retractable landing gear, a free bladed propeller and was intended to be armed initially with two 12.7mm machine guns and two 7.7mm machine guns. This was a bit more than in the Ki-43, which was in initially armed with only two 7.7s and would later be upgunned to two 250 caliber Ho-103 machine guns. Flying for the first time in 1940, the Ki-44 displayed decent uh, performance but had a lot of uh, tricky behavior thanks to its very high wing loading compared to other fighters of the day, a whopping 184 kilograms per square meter, the Ki-44 had a very high landing speed compared to the very docile and uh, easy to control characteristics of the Ki-43 uh, or the Ki-27. As was expected, the large engine and the position of the cockpit uh, gave the aircraft very bad visibility on the ground. Nakajima thought, nevertheless, they had a winner on their hands. 
and therefore um, entered it into an extensive flight testing program, which would actually result in some pretty disappointment, uh, disappointing uh, statistics. The aircraft did not exceed 550 kilometers per hour, despite uh, a very powerful engine. This made it only 20 kilometers f per hour faster than the Navy's Zero. The reasons for this were partially because of the engine mountings and the cowling, um, which offered quite some uh, extensive drag. Being redesigned, the aircraft now still didn't achieve the uh, required performance that was specified in the uh, specifications, but at least it was somewhat better. This second prototype would uh, be tested against the Navy's A6M20, which would result in a complete disaster, as the Zero practically was able to be just as good as the Key 44, with better wing loading, heavier armament, and much better maneuverability, and much more docile landing characteristics, and better visibility. Basically, it was better in all respects. Nakajima still thought that the aircraft had potential, and the third and fourth prototypes were redesigned accordingly. These aircraft would introduce the bubble-style canopy that we see here in game on all Key 43s. Interestingly, this would uh, be one of the first uses of bubble canopies, so the Japanese had it even before the Americans had, which were well known for employing it on their P-51 and P-47 Thunderbolts. But the, uh, but the Key 44 already had this feature in 1941. These new prototypes did finally um, resolve the performance issues and the fourth prototype, I think it was, uh, achieved a top speed of 626 km per hour, albeit without armament and the according uh, ammunition loadout. This was quite an impressive performance nevertheless. It was a around 100 kilometers faster than the Navy's A6M0 at this point. And despite not being fitted with any armament, production Shoki models would reach around 605 kilometers per hour, almost the same speed as the, Na the American Navy's later F6F Hellcat. With the aircraft now finally showing its uh, promising performance, a bunch of pre-production models were built enough to fill one uh, experimental unit, the so-called Kingfisher unit or 47th Independent Air Group, which would uh, saw its first service in 1941 over Indochina. One of these aircraft would be modified for a quite interesting propeller arrangement, being equipped with a Sumitomo PE7XP1 contra-rotating propeller system. In order to further increase performance, however, as the aircraft didn't show any ma any marginal uh, speed improvement, um, it would remain a one-off aircraft and what was eventually fitted back with uh, its standard free-bladed propeller. The 47th Independent Air, Group, Independent Air Group or Kingfisher unit would, um, as said, see its first service in Indochina in 1941, scoring its first victory with the new type on 12th of January 1941, uh, 1942. The number 12 would be um, a number that would uh, so, uh, would be uh, accompany this aircraft through quite a lot, and we will see this number popping up quite a lot in this video as well. Starting with the first thing, um, from the 12th production model onwards, all Key 44s were equipped with so-called butterfly flaps. Now you might ask what is a butterfly flap, and that is a qu great question, so just let me show you. In a quick test flight with the Key 44, taking the Key 44 uh, to model B, the Otsu, oh wait, not uh, a <laughs> uh, test flight, not heading into battle, we will leave that for later. Butterfly flaps were already deployed in the Key 43, and this was one of the um, advantages of the parallel development of both aircraft, since uh, promising features of one could be s incorporated into the other. 
at least in the terms of butterfly flaps, this was the case. Now, butterfly flaps are a variation of the so-called Fowler flaps. We see here that um, these flaps uh, position themselves, uh, they move to a rearwards position. They don't drop down like, for example, in the BF109. From above, it is much better to see. Let's put them into starting position or landing position. We see here that they move to the rear of the aircraft instead of just drooping down. In their combat flaps uh, position, this would give the aircraft more lift, enlarging the surface area of the wing. This meant that, especially at lower speeds, the aircraft could execute much tighter turns than without. Especially for the Key 44 with its already high wing loading, this was um, a pretty, pretty good way to improve the aircraft's maneuverability across the board. As stated, these would be uh, fitted to all Key 44s from the 12 aircraft onwards. So much for the butterfly flaps. These would later be um, deployed on the Key 84 as well as on the N1K2J. Both were some of the best fighters the Japanese uh, had to offer in the later stages of World War II. With the aircraft um, in service now with the 47th Independent Air Group, it did show its performance quite well and the aircraft would eventually be uh, taken into service as the Army Type 2 fighter. The Army, t the Army had in principle five different main fighter types throughout World War II. All designated Type 1, 2, 5. These were the Key 43, Key 44, Key 61, Key 84 and the Key 100. Now with the uh, key 44, the Type 2, they also added the designation single seat because the Japanese had another Type 2 fighter in service, the twin engine Nakajima Kawasaki Key 45 Toriyu. And the extension of single seat fighter was added to the name to avoid confusion between the two. We see here the Key 45. With the aircraft now finally showing its performance, um, a bunch of 40 uh, Key 44 model 1s were built. We also have this version here in game. This version um, had an annular oil cooler, which we can see here. It's the same ring we also see, on, for example, on the Key 45 to Ryu. Around 40 of these were built. Um, but by then the aircraft, despite its promising performance, did show some uh, serious flaws, mainly, as we stated, the very high landing speed. Um, with the Key 44's high wing loading, this was basically uh, practically given. However, the Key 43, for example, had a wing loading of a little bit over 100 kilograms. With the key 44's massive 184 kilograms per square meter, this certainly was a big change. And especially for pilots who were accustomed to the key 43 or key 27, uh, this did prov this made the key 44 ones pretty tricky for them to fly, or more more, uh, or should I say, it made them more difficult to land. Flying the aircraft was not the problem. The problem was landing it and getting it down, especially with the bad visibility from the cockpit during landing and uh, taxiing. One solution for this, it was thought, was to give the aircraft a more powerful engine. This would result in the Key 42 uh, Model 2. Now, the main difference from the Key 44 1 is the fitting of a different engine, or should I say, a more powerful engine. Because, in, it, in essence, it was the, um, the basic uh, H41 or H5 engine, but uh, developed to produce more power and given a different designation. This would become the H109. As we can see here, it is still a 14 cylinder radial engine, 
but instead of producing 1200 horsepower, this now produces a whopping 1500 horsepower. And this would be the ultimate version of the Key 44 that entered production. The Key 44 2. Now, you have to you have to think of it. This is an aircraft that is tiny. It weighs fully loaded 2.7 tons, which is less than a BF-109. A Hawker Typhoon weighs 5 tons. A Focke Wolf 19, well, 190 weighs 4 tons. This thing, fully loaded, weighs 2.7 tons and is equipped with a 1500 horsepower engine. So this gave the Key 44 absolutely amazing uh, acceleration and very good climb performance. For example, the P51 Mustang and the A6M0 both had uh, a power to mass ratio of 0.18. The BF109 had around 0.209. The Key 44 had a power to rate ratio of 0.23. This was really an incredibly um, quickly accelerating aircraft. It would only be topped in the Japanese uh, Army Air Service by the later Ki-84, which had 0.28. So for 1942 or 1943, this really was quite a handful of an aircraft. And in its intended role as an interceptor, it certainly had the performance to intercept or to, to quickly climb up to combat altitude really fast. However, not all was good and dandy, as it would turn out, the aircraft did have uh, limitations at very high altitude. The aircraft was only fitted with a two-stage uh, supercharger. We see the intake here for that. And as this was enough to catch B-17s and B-24s, however, the later B-29 would fly at such high altitude that even the Ki-44s were not unable to catch them, but had a pretty rough time doing so. Now, going back to the Key 44 2, uh, other changes incorporated into the Key 44 2 compared to the 44 1 were the uh, oil cooler, which was now not an um, annular one, but uh, a honeycomb oil cooler fitted beneath the cowling. The first Key 442s, the Model 2A, still had the uh, the annular oil cooler. This is, this is a way to identify very early model Key 442s. All later models would have this small honeycomb oil cooler. Some aircraft would also be fitted with a fuel cooler, this little thing here. All of the aircraft had the, had the uh, capability of uh, employing two drop tanks. To increase the Key 44's rather limited range, it was an interceptor after all, and the uh, fuel tanks weren't really the biggest. Another difference um, of for the entire Key 44's compared to uh, the other more lighter fighters were the incorporation of some limited armor protection. Initially, it was around 10 millimeters, with some later aircraft having as much as 12 millimeters. So again, we see the uh, magical number 12 in here. Another thing was that this aircraft actually had self sealing fuel tanks, being coated with rubber of, you guessed it, 12mm thickness. This certainly made the Ki-44 much more survivable than any of the uh, Army's fighter aircraft up to that point. And coupled with the excellent performance certainly made it uh, at that point in time, the best aircraft equipped to handle enemy bombers. Going back to the differences between the different versions, the Key 44 model 2A, we don't have it in game right now, at least not that I know of. This was again armed as the Key 44 model 1 with uh, two 7.7s and 250 calibers. The next variant would be the Key 44 2 Otsu the Model B, which we have in-game, and is probably the most interesting of all the Key 44s. Instead of being armed with uh, two 50 cals and two 77s, it would be armed with two 50 cals and two massive 40mm cannons. These were designated Ho 301. And the Ho 301 was, a, was an interesting gun. It fired caseless ammunition. 
the grenade it fired was almost like a small rocket. And this rocket would uh, use up all its propellant even before it had left the barrel. This meant that the act that the Ho 301 had an effective range of 750 meters, meaning Q44 to B pilots had to close to within suicidal ranges uh, to enemy bombers to try to bring them down with the heavy cannon armament. Um, the Ho 301 also had only uh, 10 rounds each for 10 rounds of ammunition for each gun. This meant that it would expand its, all, its ammunition in around 2-3 two, two, seconds. It did have quite a, a, a high fire rate for a weapon of its caliber, but with the severe performance limitations of the gun, uh, it proved practically an utter failure. It was pretty destructive, but only few kills were ever scored with it because, uh, well, closing to within 150 meters into an enemy bomber, yeah not the best idea. In many of the key 44 2 bs these were replaced with Ho 103s. I have heard that some had them replaced with 20mm Ho 5s, but I couldn't find any reliable sources for that, so maybe some someone of you might actually know something about that. Um, the Model 2 B retained the same telescopic gun sight used in other key 44 models. This is another way of distinguishing this aircraft, especially the ones which had their wing cannons replaced with machine guns from the um, next one in the series that we're going to talk about right now, the Key 442C, the model Hay. This had 450 caliber machine guns, 450 caliber uh, Ho 103 to be exact. The Ho 103 as we stated in the Q100 uh, video, was uh, a development of the Ho 103, a lighter uh, of the M2 Browning. Sorry, uh, more lighter machine gun, with which fired the shorter uh, Breda round instead of the 12.7 x 99 millimeter round. However, despite that meaning that it had less uh, muscle velocity, the Ho 103 achieved a very high fire rate of some 900 rounds per minute. And it could be f uh, fitted with uh, explosive rounds, negating the uh, effect of its uh, worse armor penetrating capabilities and uh, lack of muzzle velocity. Two of these machine guns would be fitted to the Key 44's cowling, firing synchronized through the propeller, with two being fitted into the wing ports. The Key 44 2C would uh, incorporate a more modern reflector gun sight instead of the telescopic one, meaning that aircraft fitted uh, with a uh, being configured to the 442C standard are pretty easy to distinguish from other Key 442 models. At least some early Key 442s had still had the telescopic gun sight, but uh, the majority were uh, configured in, the, in this configuration we see here in War Thunder for the Key 442 Hay. Some very late Model uh, 2Cs were also equipped with propulsive exhaust stacks, as we can see, for example, on the A6M0, or at least the later versions of that aircraft. These were incorporated to um, generate a little bit of extra thrust from the exhaust gases. Uh, it wasn't much, but uh, the Japanese thought, you know, every bit of speed helps. And some of the last Key 44s built did incorporate this feature. Speaking of production, uh, this was the most produced variant. Some 427 of these were produced compared to 349 of the 2B. All in all, the production run uh, would... Uh, accumulate to around uh, less than 1,300 aircraft, meaning that there were far le less Key 44s than Key 43s. The final development of the Key 44 would become an aircraft that we don't have in game right now, but I'm desperately hoping we're getting it. It was the Key 43, uh, Key 44 3. Now this was one hell of an aircraft. Only one of these was built. It was, as far as I can tell, fitted with two 50 caliber machine guns and two 20mm Ho 5 machine guns. 
so it certainly uh, up the armament quite a bit, but the most important part came in the form of an engine. It was fitted with an 18 cylinder uh, radial engine, AHA 145, which I think, but I am not sure, from what I could find on the internet, is uh, a version of the Homare engine that would also be fitted to the Key 84. And this developed some whopping 2000 horsepower. Yes, again, upping the game from 1500 to 2000. I can only imagine how much of a beast this aircraft would have been. Sadly, only one of these would be produced. And uh, production terminated um, by late 1944, early 1945, in favor for the superior Key 84. Um, the last Key 44s rolled off the production band in January of 1945. There would be two more va proposed variants of the Key 44 3. This would be the Key 44 3A armed with four 20mm hole 5 cannons and the Key 44 3B armed with two 20s and two massive 37mm hole 203 machine guns. And I really wish this aircraft would have been built because I would love to fly it in War Thunder. I mean, come on. Two 20s and two 37s and such a small, nimble uh, fighter? Damn. Well, that pretty much rounds up the uh, production run of the Key 44. It would see service all over uh, the different uh, Pacific theater, uh, all over the Pacific theater. Um, first seeing service in Indochina, then later also being used uh, over Palembang, uh, Manchuko, and of course the defense of the home islands. The Key 44 proved itself a worthy adversary, especially in the China theater, where it would face eventually uh, uh, P-40s and P-38s, this aircraft proved to be an extremely dangerous opponent, being able to easily outfly the P-40 and being more than a match for the early model P-38s. When the P-51 Mustang finally appeared, the Shoki found its match. Um, because the uh, Mustang was actually faster, and while maybe not just as maneuverable, certainly was able to uh, turn with the Key 44. Despite that, the aircraft remained, uh, to the end of the war, a worthy opponent, and it would actually be most effective when employed against enemy fighters than actual bombers. The reason for this as that being that the Key 44 was never fitted with a turbocharger, only with a two-stage supercharger, which, did, which didn't provide enough power for the aircraft to intercept high-flying B-29s. One interesting use of the aircraft was for uh, was in so-called Shinten Saikutai units, which were aerial ramming units equipped with a Key 44-2B. Uh, at least some of the uh, intended use of this aircraft would uh, resolve in the Key 44s using the heavy 40mm guns to try to score a kill, and if that failed or the ammunition supply had run dry, just ram uh, the enemy bomber. However, ramming an enemy bomber at such altitude is more easily said than done, with the B-29 being quite a fast aircraft and the Key 44 losing its performance at the altitudes B-29s operated in. It did score some kills against B-29, basically by uh, uh, some, some pre-advised uh, pre pre uh, interception, which meant that the aircraft had to be already at altitude when B-29s were detected and it had to attack from above, if that was even possible. In general, only one, at most two passes could be made before the bomber uh, was out of reach for the Key 44. However, as said, against enemy fighters or the escorting uh, P-51s, Hellcats and Corsairs, the Key 44 was a formidable opponent, with its exceptional uh, acceleration, good rate of climb, and compared to the Key 43 at least, much better armament in the form of uh, 450 caliber machine guns. It did equip at 1.12 Sentais as said, a Sentai being uh, basically uh, a squadron or uh, a small air group. But by the end of the war, many of the Key 44s had already been replaced with Key 84s or uh, being used alongside them 
with only three, aircraft, uh, three Sentais being fully equipped with the 44 by the end of the war. This wasn't helped by the rather low production run of less than 1,300 aircraft. For example, uh, more than 10 f or around 10,000 Zeros had been built in more or less the same time as uh, the Key 44. But again, the Key 44 was, despite being smaller, a more complex aircraft with it featuring uh, self selling fuel tanks, uh, pilot protection, and uh, being uh, used for a different kind of aerial combat. It certainly did provide the pilot with much more flexibility than, uh, for example, the Key 43. The Key 43 being basically more of a one of a one trick pony, being able to executing tight turns and being a great dogfighter. The Key 44 would actually prove itself to be a decent dogfighter as well, but not only in the horizontal but also in the vertical, and we also see this in here in uh, War Thunder. After the war, Key 44s, at least some of them, were uh, flown by the Chinese. Uh, it certainly weren't many, but at least they did find some use after the war. Most of them were either uh, captured or destroyed during the war. Anyways, with their low production ones certainly uh, not helping that. And following their use by the Chinese, all of them would eventually be scrapped. At least one was kept as uh, some sort of gate guardian, but fell into such disrepair that even that one would eventually be scrapped, leaving very, very sadly not a single example of the Key 44 for us to enjoy today. Not only that, but of all Japanese uh, army fighters, all of the type uh, of the types type one, two, three, four, five, all of them exist today in at least uh, one aircraft, at least one of them is still around, except for the Shoki. Even the twin-engine Key 45, even uh, of that one still exists, although it is not fully restored, but the only parts of the Key 44 that survive to this day is uh, a wing center section, and that's about it, which I think is very sad because this is a magnificent aircraft with a lot of interesting history behind it and in general just gets overlooked despite having so much potential and in general being a pretty decent aircraft overall. This was also the uh, fourth of the US pilots who while uh, agreeing with the Japanese that this was a pretty hot aircraft meaning it was demanding of its pilot certainly offered uh, great flexibility and great performance if the pilot knew what he was doing with it. This pretty much ramps up the history part for the Key 44. I certainly hope that I covered everything I intended to cover. Um, on the internet there isn't really that much information for this aircraft compared to uh, many other of the Japanese birds and most of the stuff you can find is basically uh, written altogether into one article on Wikipedia and the uh, Literature for this aircraft also isn't as extensive as, for example, for on the Zero. I did manage to get my hands on one book by uh, uh, Richard Büchel, I think is the way it is pronounced, um, ca called Nakajima Key 44 Shoki in Japanese Army Air Force Service, which gives a pretty good um, record for uh, of the aircraft's use in the Japanese Army service and also provides you with a lot of uh, photographic uh, references which is especially helpful if you want to um, build a Shoki as a model which I have uh, uh, already I have two Shokis in my model collection and I definitely want to get the uh, one thirty second scale Key 44 from Hasegawa at some point well so much for the history of this magnificent aircraft let's now take a look at the Key 44 in game. The Key 44, uh, depending on the variant, sits at a battle rating of 2.7 to 3.3 with the early model the Key 44 one with the less powerful H41 sitting at 2.7 with the most powerful version we have in game the Key 44 2C, the Hay, sitting at 3.3. 
I would generally disregard this variant. I don't like flying this one because it does not offer the same performance as the other ones. It certainly isn't bad, but these two are the ones you want to get. Either the two uh, Model 2 Otsu or the Model 2 Hay. Um, the two Otsu, of course, being a premium with here you can see the according uh, benefits of that and certainly a good aircraft but mm, tricky to use um, with its cannons you rely mostly on these heavy machine guns and it only has two of them the but it does have the benefit of being only 2.7 so yeah there's that oh i think i just made a mistake i think uh, yeah it's the battle rating starts at 2.3 sorry not not 2.7 the model one is at uh, 2.3 sorry for that and as you can see, this is uh, somewhat slower with its uh, Ha-41 uh, engine. And here the other ones, the uh, 2C and 2B, being equipped with the Ha-109, achieving around 605 km per hour. <coughs> and uh, having very, very good climb rates. As said, uh, you want to get this one for the extra money. It's not very expensive, but it... As, you, as we will see in uh, in the gameplay, it is an exceptional money maker at low uh, at this low rank. And for the regular Tech Tree variant, get the Model 2C. This is the ultimate version of the Key 44 we have in game currently. As said, we don't sadly have uh, the uh, Key 44 free prototype in game yet. I'm pretty sure it will be coming at some point, but yeah, as for now, we. This is what we've got, and this is the best variant of the Key 44 in game. This is an exceptional aircraft. It is very powerful in all aspects, maneuverable, especially in the vertical, being equipped with butterfly flaps for um, low speed combat, and um, some great armament for this battle rating. 450 caliber machine guns firing explosive rounds certainly isn't a joke. And we will demonstrate this in the gameplay. Now let's take uh, this aircraft out for a quick spin. I rather, oh wait, no, we, we will take out the Key 44 to Otsu because I can demonstrate the absolutely ridiculous low, uh, low uh, muzzle velocity of the aircraft that way. Now, we're giving full power to the engine and just look at how quickly this thing accelerates. Already taking off. And now look at this. Look at how steep I can climb with this thing. Yeah. This is just insane. And this is what happens when a 2.7 ton aircraft uh, meets a 1500 horsepower engine. This is some ridiculous <laughs> climb rate for 3.3. But yeah, um, the aircraft, at least at higher speeds, has a very, very good roll rate. In general, it, it seems that aircraft like the Focke-Wulf 190 or this one here, the Key 44, with their high wing loading and uh, rather short wings, tend to roll very well. At around 4 to 500 kilometers, uh, I would actually say around 500, this is probably the aircraft's, uh, the speed where it handles best. It doesn't look up that much during high speed. It is very very well controllable. It has butterfly flaps for low speed combat and um, is for battle rating of 3.3 decently fast. It does tend to overheat quite quickly as we can see here. And again sh giving you an account of what these butterfly flaps do to this aircraft maneuverability. This is certainly not a bad turning circle. This thing turns uh, very, very tightly for an aircraft with 184 kg per square meter wing loading. Of course, this, as you can see, this does get a little bit worse without uh, the butterfly flaps. Deploying them, yeah. You can see that this thing are only becomes somewhat of a turn fighter with these flaps deployed. They do stay uh, to random speed of uh, 400, 450. Well, let's uh, take a look. I think. Oh, yeah, around 400. Yeah. Don't go. I wouldn't recommend these, these uh, over 400 kilometers per hour. 
and at very high speeds this aircraft still turns rather well. In fact it is much better at turning at higher speed because it keeps its energy rather well and I would suggest taking your fights always with this aircraft into the vertical or the diagonal uh, with rolling uh, scissor maneuvers being certainly being um, a viable option for this aircraft. We will now demonstrate this aircraft in dive. It is decent in the dive. It can attain ha rather high dive speeds and with its good acceleration um, it does offer a very good uh, diving handling. As you can see it wobbles around a little bit at um, high speed when you start turning but it will eventually stabilize and just look how how this thing keeps its energy in a sustained turn. This certainly isn't bad. Of course that will, this will uh, become less once you start deploying your butterfly flaps. But as you can see, even at high speeds, this thing re remains decently controllable. Now, for the cannons of the Key 44, well, just take a look at this. Th these are the 50 caliber machine guns. Rather normal, right? Now, look, now watch this. Yeah. Just look how, how quickly these things fall fall off. And how slow they are. They do sound pretty awesome, but Yeah, <laughs> would you look at that? Um it's not easy to score kills with these guns, especially in bombers as you have to close within suicidal range, just like it's at in real life, or be an absolute god at sniping. It does feel very satisfying, very satisfying getting kills with these guns. I have to admit. Um, yeah, again, yeah. You see that the difference? Now again, looking at the roll rate, you can see this thing. Oh, wait, let's let's get a level. At about five hundred. It rolls rather decently. It's not, of course, not at the same level as on uh, the Focke 90, but certainly not bad. And it allows you to change direction quickly, performing such scissor maneuvers with uh, a lot of ease, with careful throttle uh, control and the use of your butterfly flaps. Now, for landing this aircraft, it does have a higher landing speed than, for example, the Key 43. But uh, this is, uh, well, in game it's not not that difficult. And we are talking about high wing, uh, high landing speed and wing loading for a Japanese aircraft. Um, you can land this thing around the same speeds as a BF-109. Deploying landing flaps, so I'd say around 150 it starts to uh, to stall or to be uh, to get uh, very difficult to control. Yeah, you can see here, I can still pull up, yeah, look at that. It's not easy to bring uh, down the Key 44. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, these guns really are something. A quick look at uh, inside the cockpit, we can see how incredibly narrow this aircraft is. And the average Japanese man is of course a little bit smaller than the average uh, European. So. I think, I mean, people talk about the 109 having a tiny canopy, or a tiny cockpit. I can only imagine how difficult it is for a, key, uh, for a European to fit into a Key 44. Um, yes, I'll say that's about it for the aircraft in-game. We will take a quick look at uh, the aircraft's um, at the re repair costs and stuff like that. It is not a very expensive aircraft, being at only a battle rating 3.3, 2.7, depends which version you're flying. Yeah, max repair cost 2,900, 3,014, so around 3,000 uh, silver lions, with the very early model only having 2,405. So yeah, um, cheapest trips to run, uh, and especially if you're flying the Otsu and know what you're doing, this thing can be an incredible money maker. At low rank, you also have the possibility to buy the early Key 44 uh, one. I myself don't have this particular aircraft, and 
well, uh, I actually don't plan on getting it because uh, I don't uh, see how it offers anything that the regular Tech Tree variant doesn't. So, yeah. But of course, if you want to get it, you you uh, you have the uh, ability to get it. Of course. Mm, again, still hoping for the key forty four free, even if it's it's just a premium. But I'm gonna get it. I, yeah. Once they drop this thing into War Thunder, god damn, I'm gonna get it myself. Well, so much so for the aircraft in game. I think we covered uh, pretty much anything. Um, Yes, I'll say it. I said arm protection here. It did have self sling fuel tank, so it doesn't burn up as easily as the key 43 or the zero modules. Um, yeah, we see here tiny wing tanks. Uh, it's an interceptor. It didn't have large fuel, fuel capacity. Uh, the 450 caliber machine guns, and here um, the 40 millimeter. Um, be careful with the ammunition. It does fire its its ammo really, really fast. I said this thing has a 900 uh, uh, fires at the rate of 900 rounds per minute, so it does run through its ammunition quickly, and it only has 250 rounds for each machine gun. So you'd need to have some sort of, of uh, trigger control. However, aiming this thing is not that difficult because it can pull so incredibly tightly into a turn, even at high speed that um, aiming it shouldn't be a problem. You want to get a little bit closer than you would like with uh, an aircraft equipped with 50 caliber M2 Brownings because of the lower muzzle velocity. But because of the aircraft's uh, very good maneuverability, or should I say because of the aircraft's good agility, um, this should not be a problem. Getting only six of your enemy and shooting him down. These uh, guns do have quite an impact. They fire explosive shells and it only takes a few hits to down an enemy fighter. Now let's take a quick look at the modifications of the key 44. They can look to 44 2C, but in general the modifications should be pretty uh, similar. Um, this time I would not recommend going for the performance mods first. I'd say get the 12.7mm offensive rounds, the belts, because you definitely don't want the standard ones. They only have tracer uh, and AP rounds, but you want these ones, the air target belts with uh, high explosive incendiary shells, or alternatively get the 12.7mm uh, stealth belts. After you've gotten the belts, then get all the performance mods. All of this good stuff is very important. Then get the survivability mods. And last, uh, the bomb mods. They are, <laughs> I mean, you can you can equip some bombs, but they are pretty small, 100 kilograms max. And this is not a bomber. This is um, a true aircraft just for aerial combat. Uh, so much for the modifications. I'd say we have covered everything that matters, and we will now start a uh, hop into the first match with this aircraft. And now here, uh, over Malta, no wait, it's Sicily, god damn it, um, yes, at interception altitude. Uh, oh, and we have an HE-111 inbound, that's a very, very easy target. And immediately behind that is an incredibly difficult target, an SP-2C Helldiver. That thing is absolutely ridiculous to fly. It's basically the American B-7A rear say. Yeah, just look at that. You, you can perfectly fly the SB-2C as a, as a fighter. But the HM-11, I, I, mean, I rarely see 111s. They are incredibly vulner vulnerable aircraft. I'm gonna intercept this guy pretty quick here. I'm pretty confident this will be an easy kill. Uh, should the oh well, the A6M2 is way too way too slow. Yeah, got him. He used up more ammunition than I wanted to, but uh, so we still have a lot of a lot of ammunition left.
Do they even have a P26? Oh my god, poor guy. I am feeling confident. P38E. Boom. <laughs> and that, boys and girls, is why you should never go head on. Oh my god. At least, <laughs> exactly. Banzai. <laughs> At least it was honorable. <laughs> Very honorable. <laughs> Ah, oh, good lord. Abundance of targets here. Of course, an F4F and an F6F I saw there. Uh, the F6F, yeah. In this position, I should easily be able to take care of him. The 44 is more maneuverable. It's just as fast as the Hellcat. With a much better climb rate. God damn it, missed him. Critical? Oh no, you're not stealing my kill. Yeah. Get out of here. Oh, we do have two key 40. Two? Another key 44. Japanese one. Oh, there's. I can't believe the P26 is still alive. God bless his heart. And oh, well, this match could still go either way. The enemy team are down some aircraft, but not too many. And yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take out this, this P26. Put him out of his misery. Sorry, but this. this uh, I want to skill. Would be a shame if he. This would be humiliating if he somehow manages to shoot me down. Oh man! He avoided that perfectly. Yeah. One hundred and eighty-eight rounds remaining for two guns. So around less than hundred rounds for each gun. Oh well. Where's the other forty-four? Oh, God damn! Now I'm alone. Well, I'm up for the challenge. Let's see. We do have the altitude advantage over uh, everyone. Over each of these three guys, um, should take out the lone course at first. One, two, three, four. They have one more aircraft somewhere. They are occupied with killing ground targets. The A36 is returning to base, most likely, or at least heading back. Yeah, we should be able to dogfight this course as on uh, equal terms, more or less. The other one is coming in. Uh, I'm not getting myself baited that easily. No way. Yeah, let's get it up to speed and loop her around. Got him. Oh, no, 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 my friend. You're not go running away from me, are you? Come back here. I need to be careful with the enemy flag.
come on. Oil, go down. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Ah, oh, damn, that's a beef on a nine. This will be a two versus one. No, 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 no. Also want to rearm. Ah, uh, of course the flag hits me. Why? Wow. God damn it! It's not enough. I have, I am outnumbered here, but I also need to be attacked by flag. Three kills so far. Hmm. We do have ammunition for at least one more. But I want to get more ammunition, and I'm now my oil, my uh, engine is damaged. Should I engage? I could. I certainly could. The RO-57 is coming in as well. Yeah, come, why not? Let, let's attack this guy. I want to get this kill. Flaps deployed. Easily turning with this guy. Got him. Whew. And now back to base. Massive thanks. Yeah, sorry, but this was my dog fight from the beginning. The engine is, is our oh, engine is screwed. Oh, this this will be close. Our engine has taken some serious damage from gunning it. Four kills so far. Let's put her down. And repair and rearm. Enemy has two fighters left. We have the advantage. There, and the R57 got killed by flag. Hmm, an A36 in the Corsair. Can we make the six kills? Maybe we can. Who knows? Let's see. One versus one, I can kill each and every one of these guys. Oh, 
Oh, key 61 coming in for a landing. Having a water leak, it seems. I wouldn't be surprised if he got hit by flag as well. Now, the A36 is up high. This is not a very good situation. We need to quickly climb to altitude to intercept this guy. <coughs> Climbing, climbing, and climbing. Climbing is remaining. We can make both of these kills. Ah, uh, the guy. Ah, uh, this guy is going for me. Okay. Okay. Let's see how we can handle this. Putting into We want to build up some speed. This thing turns better at higher speed. Kind of hoping he will dogfight us. Flaps down. He is. This will be your doom, my friend. Again, flaps down. Ah, come on. Eh, he's leaking water. I've got him pretty well. And he's dead. There's the Corsair. Oh yeah, I'm feeling invincible right now. Come on! This is a 5 kill metric now, an ace match. And the course is gonna go down as well. Should I manage to get a drop on him? I know. I am alone. I think I am. Oh, am I? Wait, there's some someone else. Key 44. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, maybe I make. I I'm confident. He won't stand a chance against me. Uh. He's going head on. Why, well, of course. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. He got him. So no six kills, but a five kill match. Definitely uh, a good result. Can't complain too much about that. Decent result, top of the leaderboard, 5 kills, ace match. Yeah. Definitely a good match. And here in the next battle with the key 44. Ah, this time in the down tier. Um, yeah, we are at medium altitude right now, at least for one from the statistics. Like, in real life, this would still be low altitude, so. Eh. Who gives a damn, right? Um, yes, uh, a lot of beer from the nines in the enemy team. Buffaloes, P63s, P400s, uh, not too difficult opponents for the uh, key 44. The B409s can be of a handful, but uh, it's definitely doable. Hmm. Gotta say, they are pretty, pretty packed tightly together. It will be a little bit difficult attacking them in such a situation. I mean, it is quite a fur ball. P400 looking juicy right there. Also the buffalo. Oh, I think I could go up for the P400. It should be the most easy target right now. Yeah, he's coming head on, trying to evade his shots. Rolling in. Then looping around. Yeah, trying to scissor this guy here. Ah, okay, he's diving away. Ah, he is a little, little bit better in a dive than me. So we will break off. There's another P400. Oh, wait, the B4 line is climbing up, so this will be an easy shot right here. Yeah, stealth belts, no problem whatsoever. Taking care of this guy very quickly. Then, of course, climbing up. Again, this aircraft excels in the vertical. Oh, buffalo right there need to engage this guy. 
Oh, Buffalo, difficult. Oh, the Buffalo is very a very maneuverable aircraft. But we do have support here, and we are taking this fight into the vertical again. Because we have much more power on our engine. And yeah, I might might get a drop on this guy here. Come on. Ah. Yes. Ah, got him. Yeah, that's what I meant with uh, taking the fight into the vertical. I don't like, uh, don't fly horizontal maneuver f maneuvers with the key 44 all too much. Um, if possible, try to take them into uh, the vertical. Because this aircraft has a lot of en energy reserves and a very powerful engine. P49E also looking pretty juicy. Come on. Ah, bad angle. Got him critical, but doesn't seem to be any thing major. And looping around. Flaps deployed briefly and diving down again. Look at how this thing builds up speed. And yeah, got this guy as well. Gaining altitude again. P400 behind us. A P40 with zero on his tail. Oh. Wonder if you can get this guy as well. Oh, this will be a tricky shot, but. I got it. Uh, oh, wait, I got <laughs> Okay, I didn't expect uh, to get this kill, but. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, yeah, I take it. Okay, we have a wildcat still left. Engine is overheating. Ah, uh, yes, this aircraft really is fantastic. Yeah, uh, not, uh, I, I thought I never thought some aircraft would take the uh, title away from the B from the F4, but this right now is my absolute favorite aircraft to fly in War Thunder. So the Wildcat is closing in. He does have the altitude advantage right now, so I need to climb first in order to engage him. Because the Wildcat is despite its way. Oh, oh, wait, a P63, okay. Oh, damn it, and I am. Ah, he caught me at the worst possible moment. Let's see if I can somehow make him to overshoot. Yep. No. Oh. Looping around, come on, come on. Can I get a drop on him? Oh, and the Wildcat's coming in as well. I need to get out of here. I am faster than the wildcat, I know that. Oh, and he's... Yeah, he's occupied, so... We will loop around and support our team. That damn engine is all, all again overheating. And the Yak-1 has gotten down. Uh, but the P-63 is burning as well. Did they go head on? Uh, well... It can't be helped. Yeah, the Yak-1 got him as well, so they went head on. Uh, only the Wildcat left, and now we are in a better tactical situation. We are above him. We do have a much faster aircraft. Uh, yeah, I hope this guy just uh, doesn't just run away. I mean, uh, wait, he, he could. I mean, I would. Yeah, with such odds, I also would, would most likely run back to base, land and J out. I mean, spare you the repair costs. Uh, don't impact the uh, KD negatively, so... Would be understandable. But I am catching him he here right uh, easily. Yeah, almost 600 kilometers power. This thing really is fast. Need to keep an eye out for flak. But I should... Yeah, maybe I can get him in the first pass. Come on, can this be another ace match? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, uh, Okay. Into the vertical and... S oh, yes, got him critical. That would have been a beautiful kill. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I've got this guy here. He has no chance right now. Low ammo. Can I make... Yes! <laughs> ace, five kills! <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it here in Germany. <laughs> Woo! 
What a machine! <sighs> Another beautiful match with the Key 44. Oh, and the next battle, this time taking out the Key 44 with the 240mm hole 301 uh, caseless, fi caseless ammunition firing cannons. Um, yes, this is not... This gun is extremely tricky to use, probably, probably the most difficult to use gun in War Thunder on an aircraft because this thing's effective range is just 150 meters. You either need to be an absolute wizard at aiming or uh, you need to get in, like in real life, really, really, really close. Which is exceptionally dangerous because in Bomber's case uh, they either shoot you down or you accidentally hit the wreckage should you manage to get a kill. Which has happened to me in this plane. We are on Grozny and are in, uh, I think we are top tier. E freeze. These should be 2.7 as well. Yeah. Let's hope they have some bombers. Continue climbing. An A36 in sight. I think there the might this might be a bomber. Could be. It looks like a pretty large silhouette. Could be what could it be? Wellington? No, we have the British on our side. It can't be Wellington. Oh well it could be. A German Wellington. Oh we have the Germans on our side on our side as well, so what is this? It's also looking pretty slow. What kind of hurricane is that? Mark IV? Uh, he has a 40mm gun, so he's probably on a bomber hunting mission as well. Oh wait, he does has bombs equipped? Uh, okay. Oh, it's an IL-4. That would be an easy target, but the Hurricane is most likely not getting him before we do, and he has way superior guns to us. So, yeah. I kind of want to demonstrate these 40mm, but, well, they really aren't that good, to be honest. I mean, getting kills with them is extremely satisfying, but, well, yeah, eh. And the Mark IV got him. I also need to make a key binding for firing my machine guns only, because I, for some reason it doesn't work anymore. I, I used a, uh, an easy key binding to select my guns. With these thing, and uh, especially with this thing, this is um, a necessary thing. But uh, for some reason the key binding doesn't work anymore. Hmm. Well, I just need, I need a key binding where I can switch between uh, machine guns and cannons. So that I don't have to press like one or two at different times because it gets really annoying. Corsair. Oh, okay, he's dead already. Oh, the Hurricane Mark IV got him. We have all sorts of trouble on our butt. But we have much superior performance. We can just outclimb these guys. Just look at the, look at this thing go. Yep, evade this guy. Come on! Oh, no, don't do that. Uh. Come on. What? No. He 
do have superior dive performance. Yeah. Oh, and there's there's some other guy. Oh man. Yeah, this thing is definitely faster. But the engine is overheating. Maybe pretty much screwed here. to get some altitude before we engage. I haven't scored a single kill yet. This can't be. Really? Oh God, I'm feeling like a total fool right now. With the Model A, with the Model A, I would have gotten at least three kills by now, probably. And I've selected the wrong ammunition as well. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> I think it just killed him with the 40 millimeters. Probably wrecking my engine right now. Uh, ah, come on. Where does did this guy come from? And why is he not going down? We can't, shouldn't be able to turn, but he's damaged, so maybe we can do it. Oh, come on. Really? How many shots does this guy take? Yeah, he, yeah he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Come, flaps, flaps, flaps. That was close. This most likely will not be a match I will feature on my video. Only two kills, pretty derpy gameplay from me. I might be able to get this kill, I don't know. The ammunition is barely enough. Need to make my every shot count. Getting in close. Oh, wow! Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I actually got him. Certainly wouldn't have, wouldn't have expected that. Thirty-six rounds remaining. Wow, might be able to get another kill with that if I'm very lucky. But yeah, we're gonna go back to base and rearm this thing. We do have three more fighters in the air. No, well, maybe this match will go pretty well after all. Who knows? It certainly was pretty derpy, but this thing does have derp cannons equipped, so uh, it's kind of fitting. Uh, but goddammit, just look at uh, I want to like this thing. I mean, the model H, hey, the, um, the 2C is the best model of the KA-44 in-game. No question about it, but this thing is just so beautiful. Just look at that skin. Uh, this is uh, the skin uh, used by the special attack unit. Um, the ones that uh, were expected to ram B-29s out of the air once their cannon element was depleted.
Oops. Yeah, I don't want to turn this into a jingles landing. Uh, for people who don't know. Uh, people who, who have who played Dwarf on the for a really, really long time might know what a jingles landing is. <laughs> Well, this pallet's certainly gonna get uh, cooked pretty well. Pretty well. Okay, we have a re uh, an RE two thousand in the air. That's a dangerous aircraft. As you can see, a pretty sturdy machine, the RE two thousand. Um. Was also the case in real life, if I m remember correctly. I think this thing was known for its um, sturdy construction, if if I remember correctly. Um, and the RE2000 plane that turns very good, uh, very well, like the Key 44. I don't know which one of the two turns better, actually. Okay, an A36. I think I can out out turn outperform that thing easily. I said this while this thing does have decent um, turning capabilities um, the its strength certainly lies in vertical maneuvers uh, or rolling maneuvers not in a continuous turn yeah and he has gotten the a46 uh, the b 109 f damn it b 109 f valuable teammate oh. Was he? Yeah, yeah, he had gotten two kills, so hmm. One, two, three, three versus three. Wait, where did we have like six guys a bunch of minutes ago? Where did they shoot him down? I completely lost track at this point. So, anyways, um, yeah, I, I again forgot to equip the stealth bells for the uh, 12.7s. Damn it. Hmm. There's a P-39 incoming. We need altitude. I don't want to engage two aircraft on the same level as me in terms of uh, altitude. Um, yeah, I hope the B-49 gets him. Please don't die. Please don't die. Uh, well, he's not dead. This could be a chance. Yes. Going in. Come on. Oh, how is this guy not dead? Is he? Yeah, he is dead. Okay. And I am now the last one alive on my team against two aircraft. Seriously. Teams these days. Oh, this will be... Uh, I think the P-49 is able to outturn me. This thing has a pretty light wing loading. Although these butterfly flaps are definitely something. Got him. Uh, I just I just sprayed these 40 millimeters because they're, they're in this scenario used anyways. And uh, as I said, I don't have a key binding for them. Uh, 10 minutes, 5... Oh, this is... Wait! I, I've got... I've just got an ace! Holy hell! What is... I don't know what the last aircraft is. And I don't have a blind hunt left. Ah, okay. I can see where he is. Okay. Great. Let's hope he's at lower altitude than me. Ah, oh, and I think I see him. I don't know what kind of aircraft he's in. That's the RE2000, isn't it? Crap. Okay. I do have enough ammunition. And there's enough time left. My plan is now to climb. Trying to get above him somehow. And forcing him down continuously should I not be able to get him on the first pass. I need the energy and... Um, altitude advantage over him. He is able to outturn me most likely. I might be able to do something with my butterfly flaps. 
I love saying that word, by the way. Butterfly flaps, butterfly flaps, butterfly flaps. Yeah. These butterfly flaps certainly help the Key 44 a lot. I mean, they were a pretty interesting development in, uh, in real life. And we need altitude. I I also don't know don't know what what it's armed is. I I've comp I always uh, uh, I know that one of the 2000 series is armed with a 20. Oh wait, forget what I said. This is a B34. I might be able to. Nah, he is prob. Nah, this will be. Ah, god damn it! I don't want to go head on with him. No, 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 buddy. Will I be able to nuke him with these 40 millimeters? Probably not. Mm. God damn, he is hitting me pretty hard. I mean, I did crit him. Oh, this is this is incredibly dangerous what I'm doing here. I am attacking from below. This this is the best position for me to attack him. But I have my ammunition load is it's not enough. I don't know if I be if I'll be able to kill him. No. God damn it. Need to rearm. I don't know if I, I probably won't have the time for it. Oh, this is this is so frustrating. If if I would have have been a a model A, uh, to a key forty four two C, this would have been a safe match. But now he's probably gonna win on points. Ah, well, I mean, a five, this is an ace match, so if... if six minutes now, I'll not be able to rearm, and I could have rammed him, like, in real life, uh, but <laughs> this wouldn't have uh, given me a win anyway, so... Uh. Let's bring her down. Maybe I can coax him into entering a fight with me again, but... And... carefully bring her in. Very soft landing there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Break and reload, break and reload. Maybe he will accept it. Maybe he's coming in. I doubt he will, but you never know. I doubt he will. Is he actually turning around? I, f I, I, I it would be great if he would because uh, now I'm I'm ready for him. Wait, is he going down? I mean, I did crit him. Maybe, maybe 
there is an odd chance I might crit him enough or uh, hit, hit his engine or something. Or maybe he crashed that landing or something. Well, he yeah, he's at his base. Maybe he cra <laughs> If he crashed that landing and I get a kill, this would oh, that would totally make my day. Six kill match, way. This match started very derpy, but it actually went pretty well for me. Yeah, definitely MVP on this one, for my team at least. I mean, this B thirty four. If, if he if he just lands uh, or he just you know, it is it would be the safe way to do it. He he is playing it smartly most likely, and I can't blame him for that. Three minute forty. He m if he takes off, I might be able to to derp him with the forty millimeters right in his face. <laughs> Derping these nuts into his face. <laughs> oh, the fourth of it. God, I really want to get this last kill. I really, really want to. Three minutes remaining. It, it is possible. It is. It will be a very, very, very uh, close call, but it is possible. Should this guy decide to get airborne again? If he plays it smartly, we'll just sit at his base. And uh, yeah, re reload and uh, just just sit there and wait this out till the match is over. Two minutes three remaining. He is taking off, I think. God, God bless this magnificent bastard. He's actually trying to fight. What a rock star! I mean, come on, kudos to him. If he now decides to really fight and just not turn to his base, I mean. This guy gets all the props from me. Seriously, that that that, that would be. Uh, this guy is a fighter. What a mad lad. Maybe he even sh shoots me down. And he has a good. I mean, he he did prove he he's a good shot. Yeah. I want to drop these forty millimeters right into his face. Got him. <laughs> Fucking six kills. Look at that. One minute and 30 seconds remaining. And I got him. <laughs> Ooh, my heart is racing. Derp to move the 40 minutes, 40 millimeter right into his... Damn it. Whoo. Oh, I, uh, wow. I'm lost for words. <laughs> this was a really, really wow. A Sixty-six. Fa wow, that's quite a result. I don't know why I've got so many, so many. Does this thing have su such good rewards? Uh, because that really is a lot of money. Twenty-four thousand, sixteen thousand, sixteen. Uh, all right. Um. Yeah, and the next match of the key 44 too. We are up against the Swedes, the British, and I think the Americans, maybe? We do have a fellow key 44 down there. And we are quickly climbing to interception altitude. Um, to get uh, the B44 or the T18, I think the T18 might be the more easy target. Uh, there's a Firefly involved as well. Oh, this could be could become an interesting match. Let's see. Piloting our little Tojo fighter. Yeah, I think we're going to go after the T18 first. All right, don't tell me he's engaging. Is that the one with the 57 millimeter? Is he at such low VR? I thought he was a little bit higher. Could be wrong though. Got him. Sniped his pilot. Let's cool the engine down a little bit. Oh, they have an XP-50. That 
is a very, very dangerous aircraft. Oh my god. Well, we do have uh, the team advantage. We are... If that XP-50 decides to attack us, uh, we are in, in numerical advantage. I have the BF on the line F as my support. Dear four and I. Let's engage this guy. This is this guy needs to die. This is an incredible uh, dangerous machine. Oh, I don't want to go head on. Oh there's another guy. Yeah, me. Yeah, that, that's probably Yeah, he's dead. Big furball going on there. What is a Nimrod doing there? What the hell? And what the hell is he firing against? Yeah. A Mustang. Ah, J22. Let's engage him. We're coming in hot. And except for. The runner, this thing is very easy to control at high speed. I mean, the roll rate certainly isn't bad for us. Oh, come on. And just look at, at how, how this thing uh, manages to turn inside uh, it's a, into the turn of its opponent at such high speeds. That's um, insanely good. This thing really excels at uh, higher speeds. Where's the Mustang? There's the Mustang. Four guys left. Where are they? A Spitfire. Ah, we need to get altitude in order to attack him. Oh, that, that's a pretty decent screenshot. Yeah, that will look good as a thumbnail. Oh, like this. Ah, who cares? Ah, uh, this Spitfire is behind us. Um, yeah, I am not too sure how to engage him right now. Maybe if he attacks the BF on the 9, I might be able to get the drop on him. If he decides to attack us from his position, he has a very big advantage. We cannot turn with him. The Spitfire is one of the few aircraft that. Uh, at this BR is able to easily outturn the key 44. But he is going up for the 109, it seems, so we will. Damn it, the B 34 would be an easy target as well, but I, I need to pr protect my teammate here. Easy if the 109 turns towards me. I need more speed. Come on, come on, key 44, accelerate. Got him. Now back, trying to engage the B-34 and the Mustang should they decide to take off again. There's the B-34 I think, he's probably going down, trying to land and I think I s Yeah, the Mustang has taken off. I see him barely. Yeah, there it is. Have them? F ah, no, the Mustang. Uh, the one of is behind me. I thought I had the Mustang for myself. <sighs> Too bad. So I need to fight for the skill. I mean, I would have anyways because, well, uh, it's not like this guy is letting himself killed uh, just like that. Oh, the B18 is there as well. We do have a lot of ammunition left. Come on, we need to make this quick if we want to get the skill. Yeah, and got him. Pulling up again. B18 is next on my list. Well, but uh, if he plays it clever, he will just turn it back towards his base. Yeah, and that's what he does. I mean, I would do the same. Getting away from the base. 
Oh, there's another P51. Oh my god. I almost missed this guy. And I'm in a very low energy state. We need to get up some speed quickly. Yeah, this guy is coming in hot. Damn. Come on, 44. Turn, 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 turn. Yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, thank God for that 109. Yes. <laughs> That's an ace right there. <laughs> Wouldn't have been possible with the 109, though. I mean, he did uh, manage to... to uh, Shoot at him and distract him, so... Confirm. Can you make the six kills? I mean, this, this would be insane. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah! 50 rounds... Uh, 25, 25 rounds per gun remaining. Can we make the 7? I don't think so, but... Holy hell, 6 kills right now. Yeah, that's quite a result, I'd say. The I-185 is with us. I think the 109 has died, right? Oh, damn. Okay, I only got one kill. The other key 44 has done pretty well for itself, though. Three kills, not bad. But yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious who got the most kills in this match. <laughs> B34 is playing it clever. I have to say, I mean, he is. Yeah, exactly that. He lured his. Uh, why I 85, 185? And I'm now the last one on this team. And I am not feeling all too confident um, engaging this guy right now over his base and this low ammunition state. We will return, we have enough time, we will return to our base, reload, then quickly climb up to altitude and see what we can do. If anything, we will win by points. I mean, we do have uh, a very high point advantage, we will we'll also try to... Uh, yeah, get some ground kills and to contribute to that. Or oh, getting at least one ground kill. We will win this most likely. Um, yeah, returning to base. Let's see uh, how quickly we can rearm. Our fuel state also isn't the best. It would be enough, I guess, but uh, no. We don't want to take any chances when I mean, we, we've gotten six kills so far. Can we make it seven? Can we make it uh, another absolutely amazing match? I mean, this really is an amazing aircraft, it really is. Oh, well. Maybe this would be good for a screenshot, I don't know. There's the airfield. Bringing her in for a landing, reducing speed. I said, this thing does keep its energy rather well. And please, I, I just hope I don't, I don't screw up this landing. I mean, it, it happens to the best of us, but it would really, it would really suck right now. Landing gear down. Flaps extended, putting a little bit of speed, I mean, again, this thing has a comparatively high landing speed. 
and gently putting her down. Perfect. In Germany we would say eine Bilderbuchlandung. Textbook landing. So we are rearming. Again, just 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 look at that. Just look how tiny this cockpit is. I mean, jeez. And there's the B-34 up high. Ah, uh, of course he climbed. Uh, we need to get that to altitude. There's no other way. Yeah, putting in, her, putting the 44 into her max climbing angle. Yeah. Just look at that. <laughs> this thing climbs like a rocket. And it still keeps accelerating. <laughs> Holy hell. Oh, well, now, now it's going down. Okay. Yeah. This is more, much more reasonable. Climbing angle, angle, which is still just, I mean, wow. The problem is that we need to get um, above this guy. In order to um, minimize, we, we, need to, we want to make a high speed pass on him. Then diving away and rinse and repeat. I don't want to sit with this aircraft just just uh, sitting behind this guy, getting myself shot up by his tail gunner. Uh, wait, is he? In uh, wait, is this guy trying to engage me? No. What is he doing? Why is he flying in a circle? He's trying to run back to his base. And we will continue climbing because if he does so, we want to. Oh, wait, is he now turning around? Okay, seems he took my invitation for a good dogfight. Well then, flaps deployed. He's playing it rather well, I have to admit. Don't want to be... Yeah, exactly, his tail gunner. Yeah. Go, coming in from below. Which is a much safer position for us to attack from. Got him critical. Yeah, no. This tail gunner probably has a better field of fire, so we will dive down and try to do the same again before he manages to get back to his base. We can afford to spray some ammunition here. Yep, yeah, no, 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 no. Not gonna take any chances. Kinda wish I had the 40mm key 44 for this. He is, I have to admit, this guy is playing it very well. <coughs> Come on. Put the fire out. Yes! <laughs> Mutual kill! 
<laughs> well, that's a win for me. <laughs> ah, seven kills. Ah, oh, kind of wish I would have uh, <laughs> just shut him down, but eh, not bad, not bad at all. Seven kills, man. Not too shabby. I just wish I've gotten talisman for my key forty four. God damn it, for only one tank I will never play probably. Ah, uh. but yeah, <laughs> that's what a match. And here again with the ki forty four. In I, it seems like we are top tier. Oh, this will be fun. This will be fun. Let me tell you. Scanning the horizon, maybe we can make something out already, but it doesn't seem so. I do have a fully trained crew on this, so yeah. Oh, this might actually be a down tier. We have a Ki-45 to Ryu. Oh yeah, I think that's a 3-0 or 2-7. Ah, there's the first enemy aircraft. Could be a bomber, I don't know. It does look pretty slow. Wait, this thing is big. Wait, do we have the Germans? Yeah, we have the Germans on our side, so it can't be a BB-238. Could be a B-25, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's, it is possible. Oh, Wellington. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, it, it could be a Wellington. But I usually don't see them. I mean, uh, there, there, there seem to be very few people that play the Wellington these days. At least in my experience. Um, yeah. IL-2? Okay, no problem. A DB... Oh, yeah, a DB-3 could be one of those. Whatever it is down there, I, I kind of want to know. Oh, well. Plenty of targets up ahead. The IL-2 is looking very juicy. Ah, P-49, that could be tricky. The X-7, no problem. And what's the mystery plane up here? What are you? Does look like a bomber. Does look kinda big. What is it? Come on. Yeah, ew, it's a Wellington! Well, let's take out the IL-2 first, then head for the Wellington. Okay. Yeah, you can dive all you want, buddy. Not gonna escape from me. I used up more ammunition than I wanted, but it is an IL-2 after all. It does take a lot of hits. Oh, there's a P-39. Hmm. Don't want to mess with that. Oh well, the Wellington is. Hmm. Well. Oh, a yak. What is the P forty nine doing? Okay. Okay. I might be able to catch him. I am. Nah, I think I. I. Well, no. Well, eventually we should catch him. I mean, this thing. Does have an impressive climate, but ah, just another IL-2, two IL-2s. This will be easy. If our ammunition doesn't run dry, we can get both of them rather easily. Ah, well, there are other aircraft engaging. What was that? The IL-2 actually shot down the 190. The shame. It. And just look how how you can throw this thing around. Look at this agility. Amazing. Got him. 200 rounds. 
Uh, 400 rounds remaining. Let's see if we can... Oh, the IL this IL-2 has taken out the uh, BF-109. Holy hell. Taking him out. Oh, and there's a Wellington. Wait, that's not the same Wellington from... No, it isn't. Well, we have killed three IL-2 so far. Let's see if we can take out the Wellington as well. Huh, you see what see what I did there? Oh, and he's coming head on. Oh, I don't know why he's doing that, but uh, be my guest. This makes it easier for me. Oh yeah, present that big as yes. And he's oh, we only have. Uh, I would like to engage the P400, but we are dangerously low on ammunition. Four kills. Four enemy aircraft still up. We could make this an ace match. Let's see. Oh, there's the P49. That is not good. We have no ammunition. Yeah, sorry, Key 45. You are on your own on this. I don't lie, the, the, the uh, Toryu is holding up pretty well. I mean, it is a rather small heavy fighter, to be honest. And it is rather maneuverable for an, for an aircraft of its type, but against a P-49, ooh, he is doing exceptionally well right now, I have to say. That is some impressive flying. Uh, I think now he's screwed. Yeah. Kinda wish I could have helped helped him there, but uh, yeah. Only 80 rounds of ammunition for four machine guns. No, sir. I'm not gonna take these odds. Bringing her down for a quick reload. And you see how responsive this aircraft is, even at such low speeds. Uh, and you see the landing speed is a bit higher, quite a bit, than in the KI-43 Oscar. But certainly, uh, pff, nothing uh, you, you, you can't handle. I mean, pff, this is um, high landing speed for a Japanese plane. Come on. Come on, my beauty. Rearm. Yak-9, P-400. Okay, this match could go either way right now. Four versus three. And we are at the forefront. Both B-109s behind us, the F4U Corsair, up and above. But, yeah, he might be able to take out that Yak-9. I want to go for the P-400 right now. And there's a third aircraft somewhere. Is it? No, the Wellington seems to be dead. There's one with two kills, a fighter pilot. Oh, he's the one he's, who's not spotted. Okay, this could be dangerous. Ah, there it is. It's, it's, ah, it's a P-39 from, from, from before. Right. Fifteen minutes remaining, okay. Damn. I wish I could make this a 7 kill game. I mean, I do have the capability. I can outperform any of these aircraft with my Key 44 if I fly correctly. Careful use of flaps and uh, vertical tactics. I can outperform any of these guys. But for first, I want to take out the P400. I will engage him on more or less equal terms in terms of height which might not be my ideal best position for the 44 but it is doable and if I carefully deploy my butterfly flaps I should be able to stay in turns with this guy not to mention I am coming in from behind I do have the advantage right now Ah, now the P-39N is coming in as well 
Screw that. I need to make this quick. Yes, okay. Manage, manage that. Now it's him against me. Come on! Come on, butterfly flaps. Don't disappoint me here. Power to the engine. We do want to keep up the energy. Yes! I think that... Please tell me that was me. Yeah. Yes! Yes! Six kills! Alright! Whew! What a match! God, my heart is racing right now. Yeah, that's right. What the fuck, Key 44? Yeah, sorry. But this is true. Head ons are for noobs. Except for certain aircraft, maybe. Like uh, the Tau 154. But yeah, Corsa, that was certainly not your kill. That was my kill. Six friggin' kills. I mean, this is... Oh. Where's the last one? Come on. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, it's the Yak-9. Let's see if he takes off. I want to make the seven kills. Come on! Let's climb. Uh, I think this guy might be base camp. No, he isn't, sorry. Taking that back. He is taking off. Come on, please let me get seven kills. Come on, please, please, please. Oh, I'm pumped right now. I really am pumped. Yeah, I'm, I'm confident right now. That yak has no chance. I mean, he is playing it cleverly. Or should I say, if he if he would have played it completely clever, he should have jaded out. He has no chance. I mean, against three fighters. Yeah, I think he, he will just... <clears throat> Sad, I want to make the seven kills, but I'm not gonna go uh, into these flag positions. I think he might be landing and jaying. Oh, is he? No, he isn't. Did this guy can't... Just little, little, literally can't win. We do have the advantage in aircraft and in ground kills. I mean, either J out or just. Uh, this is annoying. I mean, he clearly doesn't want to fight right now. Where is he? Right now I can't... Sp I don't see him. Ah, I see him now. Yeah, I think he... Yeah. It looks like, like, like he has decided to... Uh, leave while he can. Certainly can't... Uh, I can't complain, uh, com complain on him for that. I mean, it is... Uh, a situation he he just literally can't win. Yeah. Well, six kills. 
Would you look at that? Eradicated the enemy team <laughs> almost by myself. Holy hell. I mean, I am pretty braggadocious right now, but come on. Six kills, this really is a very, very good result. And that will be quite an impressive first, oh, this was quite an impressive first match for this video for the uh, KI-43, uh, KI-44 Shoki. The Demon Queller. And we should be... Wait, this guy, wait a sec, this guy is taking off again. What the hell is going on? Um, taking that back, there might be a chance for a 7 kill after all. Well, let's see. I, I'm keeping a very close eye on him. Oh, I can already tell that this will be um, 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 a warning on the mic if I make the 7 kills. I, I, I will probably scream. I, I am gonna scream. God damn it, come on, come on, come on. Please don't fail me now, key 44. Uh, yeah, he has no chance right now. I have every advantage. Come on, come on. Yes! Yes! Seven kills! <laughs> Oh my fucking lord! <gasps> Damn! I, I'm just really just lost for words right now. That's a new personal record. I mean, um. I did score 7 kills with DB 9 f uh, in one of my earlier videos, but... Wow! <laughs> that was a really, really great game. <laughs> so, the key 44. Oh my god, what a machine this is. Um, yes, this aircraft, I mean, it goes without saying, I, I highly recommend this machine. This is an absolute fantastic aircraft, if you know what you're doing with it. If you, It is rather beginner friendly, I'd say, but for an expert pilot, this thing is an absolute dream to fly. It allows you to do some insane maneuvers. It is very maneuverable, it is fast, and it has absolutely absurd acceleration. With decent armament as well. Um, again, I can't say it enough. Use this aircraft as much as possible into the vertical. The vertical playing field is this aircraft's major strength because it has this very, very good acceleration and powerful engine. If if you follow these rules, it will, it will be a gift that uh, won't stop giving. This is an absolutely fantastic fighter aircraft uh, for practically all situations. You can use it against uh, bombers, against fighters, it isn't good in, in the ground support rule, but who who cares? If you are an Air RB main like me, this is oh, this is every pilot's wet dream. Um, yeah, as you can see, this thing is uh, I'm lost for words right now. This is an incredibly good fighter aircraft, easily easily the best at this BR in my opinion. Now should it be a higher BR? Uh, I don't know. I think at max three seven. Um, but I think it sits pretty comfortably at 3.3. Uh, at this kind of lower BR, not everyone is, is uh, knows what he's doing. And um, yeah, there are a lot of Key 44 pilots that uh, will perform the wrong maneuvers. Mm. So I kind of see why this thing is at uh, BR 3.3. The F Key 44 too definitely belongs uh, at this BR. This one... Maybe at 3.7, but I'm totally fine with it sitting at 3.3 because I'm gonna play the hell out of this aircraft. <laughs> I can guarantee you that this will be my new old reliable. Uh, if I ever have a bad day, I know what aircraft to use to get my spirits up. Um, yeah, highly, highly recommended. This is 
Ah, oh, such a good aircraft. Well, um, that's it for this rather extensive video. Again, the ultimate guide to the Ki-44-2 Tojo. Yeah, I kind of missed on that, uh, on the history part. The uh, Allied reporting name for this aircraft was Tojo. So yeah, uh, pro provided you with the last bit of historical information for this machine. And I'd say that's it, and I see you in the next review.